Well, guys, this one here is a video from the vault again. This is last year's pantry challenge, week three. And I have to put a little blurb at the beginning of this because it is hilarious when I go through these ones from last year because I'm repeating the same stuff again this year. Not necessarily the same recipes or the exact same language, but it's funny how I'm going through the same problems. The freezer's full, more sheep getting butchered, and all of our favorites are all carbs and now we're not it just it makes me miss them i have to say it but anyways i hope that you enjoy this one as well even though it is last year's it was a great pantry challenge week and uh yeah we'll see you on the next one it's the third week of january and we are still eating out of the pantry so this week for the pantry challenge we are going to be tackling some of our favorite recipes now that of course is not actually tackling because these are go-to's that we eat all the time uh, from sourdough pancakes all the way to spaghetti and whatever else we happen to throw in there we want to keep it keep it fresh and keep you surprised but this week is going to be all about all of our favorites here on the homestead so tonight for dinner we are having quiche you saw us make this quiche in uh, the first week of the challenge and it's been in the freezer so we've got that out and we've defrosted it but that's not our favorite for tonight what we're going to have with our quiche involves using our Canada Crookneck squash and my wonderful air fryer. And we're going to make fries for a side dish with our uh, quiche. Now, this is quite the go-to for us. The kids love squash fries. If you don't have Canada Crookneck, butternut squash also works just as well. All right, so there are our fries spread out. I'm actually using parchment paper this time because... I do find it does make a difference from doing it all right on the cookie sheet. But uh, I didn't go into too much detail about this in this video because we do have a recipe video for this, which I will link above. Uh, so definitely check it out if you want to uh, give that a try because these are amazing fries. But we uh, have the air fryer button set on the oven and it's uh, almost at 425. So we're going to get these in and uh, they got to cook for 20 minutes and then turn it off and... They sit for a little bit longer in there and then we're going to eat. So we'll bring it back when we try these out. I burnt them. Well, they're not really that burnt. They're just crispy or well done, but they're still going to taste amazing. And you can see there we've got our dip ready, which is just mayo with some Italian style seasoning stirred in. So we're going to go and enjoy our quiche from the first week with our squash fries. All right, guys. Well, tonight we are making one of our ultimate favorite fun food. We are doing nachos with ground rabbit and refried beans. Now, as everybody knows, we save our beans as dry beans. So I have already kind of jumped ahead here and I've cooked these beans. Basically what I do is I boil them for a minute, then let them sit for an hour, drain them. Then I refill them with water and boil this again and then let it simmer for about another hour, depending on what I'm hoping to do with it. Now, refried beans, I wanted them as soft as possible. Some of these are a bit older, and to be honest, it's gonna be pretty tough to uh, mush them up, but we'll see how we get on here. First off, we're going to cook up our meat, and then we're going to put some homemade taco seasoning in there, and then we're going to compile all the rest of this. So from the, from the pantry or freezer, I am using half an onion. I've got one cup of our frozen red peppers, uh, salsa and basically that's it kind of with the rabbit oh and olives we're going to be opening a jar of olives we have about five or six jars of olives that have been kicking around for years we do like black olives but we don't use them very often and then when you open a jar you've got to use it because it doesn't keep forever so anyways we're going to splurge we're going to open one we're also going to be doing pizza later this week so we figure we could always use the olives on that as well so without any further ado we're going to get started with cooking this and I will bring you back when we've got it compiled so you can see just how tasty this is so in the end my beans were not going to mash up with just my potato masher so i brought out the big guns and i used my little blender thingy i just put a little bit of the reserve bean juice in there and look at those beauties those are going to be so good in this meat with the seasoning i'm so excited so as you can see here, we've added in our refried beans. Well, they're fried now. I guess they're not refried yet, but they're refrying now. We're going to put some seasoning in there. Homemade taco seasoning. I like it flavorful. So we put in at least two tablespoons, maybe even three, but we'll see how it goes. 
And a little bit of that reserve juice that was from the beans just helps to make it all wonderful. You know what, we're gonna just put it all in because it's gonna cook off. There you go. Oh boy, it's getting good and smelling wonderful. Now, while this is kind of simmering here, I might even put a lid on it just to keep it from drying out. We are going to treat ourselves this time with actual nacho cheese sauce on these nachos. And part of the reason for that is the fact that we are on a dairy budget because for this challenge we do have to be buying our dairy and I want to minimize the amount of cheese we're using because it's a lot more expensive than milk. We're going to be using six ounces of cheddar cheese, two tablespoons of our goose oil instead of butter, two tablespoons of flour just to kind of thicken it up, then we're going to put three quarters of a cup of milk in, get that heated, put our cheese in and a little bit of um, cayenne pepper and chili powder and then that's going to be our nacho stuff and then we've got a little bit of cheese just to sprinkle on top but all right so we have our meat onions peppers and now we're just getting some cheese on there oh my it's gonna be so good then we just got to get our olives on top i like my olives to get a little bit crisped up so that's why they're going on top I think I might have too much cheese sauce. That's all right, I'll just save some for tomorrow. I also have leftover meat, to be honest, so for lunch we'll probably make some wraps or something for tomorrow. I think that is just about drowning in cheese. <laughs> so, let's get the olives on there. It's good to use these up out of the pantry because they've been kicking around for quite some time. I honestly, I didn't even check the date on them. I probably should have. We'll do that in a moment. We'll get them on first so that we're committed. So we're going to sprinkle a little bit of extra cheese because I think cheese is what really makes nachos, isn't it? And last ingredient to go on this before it goes in for us is parsley. Cilantro would have been really, really nice, but to be honest, I did not get cilantro dried from the garden this year. It just got late and it got frosted and was no good. So parsley it will be, but it'll be just as good. So that's everything on there for now. We're gonna get this in the oven, uh, probably only about 10, 15 minutes. I'm doing it at 375, and just enough to brown the edges and melt all that cheese and make it yummy and good. All right, so we've taken it out of the oven. It's looking amazing. Next, we're just going to put our fermented salsa on top. I do have a recipe for this, which I will link above. Not really the right time of year to be making fermented salsa, but still. Might just leave a little extra on the side. And nice dollop of sour cream. And there we go. I think we better give it a try. Hot, it's very hot. That's all right, there's sour cream. Awesome. So awesome. Since this week we are going to be doing our favorite meals, I am going to be making my favorite spaghetti. Right here we have the ingredients from the pantry. We have our spaghetti noodles. Right here we have our meat, which is ground lamb. We have two Italian zucchini tubes. And we have one larger marinara so i have just put in our ground lamb as you can see i'm just trying to mush this up quietly so we don't put oil in since the ground lamb gives off so much oil already so we don't need any so it is almost time to put our next ingredient in but i don't know if you can see this but there you know i said there that the lamb gives off a lot of oil. There's a lot of oil in there already. So I am going to start with putting one of our Italian zucchinis in. Almost there. We did it. So now it's time for the next one and hopefully it goes better. Much better. <laughs>
So we are now going to put in our marinara sauce. We like to put a little bit of water in it to just get all the stuff out of it because if you can see, there's still a lot in there. So, so I am now putting them in. Here we go. So I have to admit, we have a very special secret that we put in our spaghetti. We like to put our fenugreek in it. Doesn't have to be a lot or it can be. If you like the taste of fenugreek. And it's mixing time. So before um, plating up dinner, I forgot one of the most important things, cheese. Well, this is the final turnout. Now, now how delicious does that look? Are you excited to try it? Yes, definitely. Well, we've already tried it. I know, that's why it's a favorite. Well, guys, we are back in the dungeon pantry here, and we just picked up two of our four sheep that we had butchered in January. We get two done each week. So we just picked up the two when we dropped off the next two sheep to be butchered this week. And it's a lot of meat. Even though we had it all done deboned into ground and stewing, uh, the only thing we kept as a roast were the tenderloins, it's a lot of meat. So I believe it's 126 pounds in total. Uh, that's a lot of meat and as you know i've been trying my hardest to get space in the freezer i've been trying with this challenge to use up stuff and it just doesn't seem to be making a dent very quickly so let's take a look at what came and the space i have to work with so you can see here we are looking at a lot of meat a lot of meat this one right here was our one younger ram oh my goodness i can't even lift it up uh, he was only, it was 36 pounds of meat that came from him, but the other one was a big boy, 88 pounds of meat. So, let's see what we're working with in the freezer. It's not going to be pretty. So, that's what we're working with. And the other freezer is super full. I tried to organize this yesterday a little bit. Knowing that we were picking up the meat today, I moved all the fruit and stuff to this side. And then down here is okay this is still fruit yes but what we have down here is the lamb that we have left from when we got them butchered in august so i want to get all that out so i can put the newer stuff on the bottom and then we'll see as you can see there's still one pack of bones there i did take out the other pack uh, to make some broth today but i wasn't anticipating that they would give us all the bones again i didn't ask for them this time but they did and of course i don't want to waste anything so we're going to empty this out and see how much we can get in here. All right, so I managed to get everything in there just except for all the bones. So, so lucky enough for us, right now it's cold outside. So we're going to put these in a Rubbermaid tote in the porch. And I'm going to be making broth like nobody's business and getting it canned up. And that's what we're going to do. I may end up next week. Asking them not for the bones because, as you can see, freezer space is so at a premium. And if it's the same amount of meat coming again next week, we might be in trouble. <laughs> we may be going shopping. We may take all the money we've saved on this pantry challenge to go buy a new freezer. But what I had brought home this week is in the freezer now. I did set aside seven pounds of stewing lamb, which uh, we're going to make some uh, lamb stew and pressure can that. Uh, at least that kind of freed up a little bit of space, like I said. So lamb broth, lamb stew. We're going to be making some chili. I think there's a lot of lamb products that are coming in the next bit that have to get into jars and out of my freezer. All right. So tonight in our favorites, we're making pizza. It's going to be goose meat pizza. Some of that goose meat that we'd already cooked and put away in the freezer. I've just kind of marinated that in some barbecue sauce. And then we're going to have red onions from the pantry peppers from the uh freezer you'll start to notice this is why we put a lot of peppers in the freezer because we really love peppers here and homemade pizza sauce which i uh did a recipe video on i'll link it above um so we're going to without any further ado get going on this pizza dough very very simple recipe i love this recipe it is um one and a half cups of warm water 
one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, one and a half teaspoons of sugar. Let that sit for a few minutes. Then add one and a half teaspoons of salt and three cups of flour. And you just let that sit for sort of 20 minutes to kind of rise. I put it by the wood stove and then it comes out this beautiful dough that we're going to stretch out to be pita. So we'll get this made up and we'll bring you back. So one thing that I forgot to mention in my ingredients that go on this recipe is our dried yellow pear shaped tomatoes. Really pizza is the one <laughs> I'm gonna say is the only reason that we grow these. These dried are like candy and they're so amazing on pizza. Um, we grow, anyways, there's videos about it. You can find those, but Yellow pear shaped tomatoes, can't forget to put them on the pizza. And we're also gonna throw on a few of olives on mine and Chris's half uh, from the other day, those leftover ones from the, uh, what did we make that had the olives? Oh, the nachos. Yes, from the nachos. So anyways, I'm almost done. I'll show you it when it's finished. And there we go. It's all put together, ready to go in the oven. That's gonna cook for about 25 minutes and then we're going to enjoy this meal. On a side note, I've also roasted some fresh lamb bones so that we can get uh, some broth made. Oh my. I don't know if you just heard it. My stomach just growled. Talk about perfect timing. Anyways, this looks amazing and we're going to get to it. Well, next on our favorites is going to be sourdough pancakes. Today is a snow day, or I guess I should say an ice day for the kids. So they're not at school. So we're having pancakes for lunch. Uh, sometimes during the week, it's a little bit more long-winded to make those pancakes uh, when we're in a hurry to get on the bus. But it's a very simple recipe. One and a half cups of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon baking soda. Uh, basically stir that all together and then we're going to add the um, wet ingredients, which are basically one cup of sourdough discard, which is perfect because I'll be honest, I uh, fed this sourdough about three days ago and it rose and I was, had best of intentions of getting another loaf of bread made and it just didn't happen. So I need to refresh this so that I can make some bread later on today. But I digress. One cup of sourdough um, discard, one and a half cups of milk, three tablespoons of either butter or oil. I'm actually going to be as I have already throughout most of these videos using our goose oil slash lard and one goose egg. Now, if you don't have goose eggs, obviously you can replace those with two large chicken eggs or three medium. Uh, but <clears throat> I find that the goose eggs work amazing for these pancakes. So it's a good reason. And I have four left to use up before uh, they kind of go bad. So uh, that's it. Basically mix it all together. And then the last ingredient I'm going to add is baking powder, two teaspoons baking powder, but don't add that until right when you're ready to get them into the frying pans. I even turn my pans on so that they're hot and ready to go so that it just is starting to rise as I'm starting to make them. So I'm gonna get these made and we're gonna enjoy a wonderful lunch. And there we have it, a mountain of pancakes and our homemade apple maple syrup. Now uh, we will put links for both those recipes actually above because We've done both of them as videos, so give it a try. It's worth it. Well, tonight for dinner, it's just Chris and I, and we're having one of our favorite meals that could be breakfast, lunch, dinner. It really doesn't matter. We are having our lamb breakfast sausage patties. So we're kind of basically making egg McMuffins uh, with the lamb, our own eggs, and uh, splurging on the cheese. And one of the things that I have to open a new jar, which I don't have very many, but we definitely require them for this meal, is our roasted red peppers uh, canned. So we've got all that and, and we're frying up some of our potatoes for like those uh, nice yummy shredded hash browns. So this is kind of a comfort meal almost. I mean, this is something that we can pull out of the hat when we need something quick. We love this meal and it's so great to use up stuff that we produce on the farm. But I'm gonna get this made and we're going to sit down and enjoy a nice quiet night without any children. Well, all I have to say is dinner is going to be tasty. There it is. Two egg McMuffins with a little bit of hash browns. 
Well, we are fast approaching the end of week three of the pantry challenge. And for our final meal, we are going to once again be using squash. Now on those fries that you saw at the uh, beginning of the week, we had stored a little bit of leftover squash in the fridge and I have added one more and uh, we're going to be making some yummy crepes uh, filled with a squash uh, cheese mixture. <laughs> uh, we actually have a video on this recipe, which I will link above right now. And uh, it's one of our favorites around here, it uses stuff that we have in the pantry uh, because it's crepes, it uses extra eggs as opposed to things like pancakes and stuff like that. But we're gonna get these squash ready and get them in the oven. So you can see here, I've got my squash cut in half. Basically, we're just going to be roasting those. This one didn't go so well, I was not very precise, but I'm sure it will work just fine. And basically all I do is just put a little bit of olive oil in one of these, kind of rub it around, move to the next one, take some of it with me. And then we're gonna roast these at 375 for about 40 minutes. Um, I do suggest watching them, but you really can't overcook them. They'll just sort of caramelize with the part that stays on the uh, parchment there. As you can see, I do reuse parchment, uh, especially for something like this. Uh, I believe this parchment had sausage rolls on it before, and I just keep it in the uh, pantry shelf there so that when I do something like this, I can reuse an old piece rather than um, breaking out a new one. Conserving, right? Oh boy, I'm hungry. And there you have it, final meal for this challenge. Look at that, so tasty. So we've made it through week three, and uh, to be honest, still barely any dent in the pantry, but then we are also canning and making stuff as we go, because that's how we do things here. So we did have a trip to the grocery store this week. We bought uh, milk, two things of mandarin oranges, because they were on sale for $1.99, and they are my favorite oranges, so I could not pass up a deal like that when I was paying $6.99 for the bag right before Christmas. Uh, we also bought two, they're not quite two liters, but of, of orange juice that are in the fridge. Uh, basically, we kind of always keep some orange juice stocked in the fridge, and we don't want to deplete what we have, and they were on sale also for $1.99. So like we said at the beginning of this challenge, we're not going to pass up a good deal, which is why we also bought coffee. Um, coffee is something that we're always watching because the price really seems to fluctuate and we like to keep at least six months worth of coffee in the pantry downstairs, which uh, wasn't being depleted, but it also hadn't been on sale for quite some time. And we found coffee beans, whole beans, two pounds for $12. So we did also buy those. So I believe in total, we spent $42 on groceries this week, but some of that was pantry storage type items. So I don't know exactly how to view that. We're not kind of worried about it because we didn't want to pass up any opportunities just because we were in the midst of the challenge. But otherwise we have been pretty good and we have not bought any other extras. So super pleased about that. Stay tuned next week because we're going to do something a little different again. And we're going to uh, showcase every meal we eat all week. So three meals a day, all seven days. So 21 meals are coming. See just how we eat here on the homestead. But otherwise, thank you very much for joining us on this pantry challenge. And we look forward to your comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time.